His Excellency, the President of the Republic of the Philippines. I invite you to take your seats as the opening ceremony is about to begin. Thank you. 
Gentlemen, we invite you to take your seats. Opening ceremony is about to begin. Please take your seats. Take your seats. Thank you. Thank you. Your Majesty, your Royal Highness, your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon. It is a pleasure and an honor to welcome you here to Brussels for this commemorative summit. Today we are celebrating, we are celebrating 45 years of diplomatic relations between the European Union and the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. What a great joy to be gathered. This first ever summit in the heart of Europe between the leaders of the member states marks an important anniversary. In 2020, the EU and the ASEAN elevated their ties to a strategic partnership with a commitment to work jointly on enhancing prosperity, promoting security, strengthening resilience and improving sustainable connectivity. This summit offers a political forum and is of course also a great opportunity to demonstrate and reconfirm this shared commitment. Now, without further ado, I kindly invite you to rise to listen to the anthems. First, we will hear the one of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, and immediately after will follow the anthem of the European Union. So please stand up.
May I ask you now to welcome the President of the European Council, who will officially open the ceremony, Mr. Charles Michel. Merci, merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. Uh, Majesty, Your Majesty, Your Royal Highness, ladies and gentlemen, heads of state and government, uh, excellencies, dear friends, for me it is a, a particular pleasure to offer you a warm welcome to Brussels uh, for this summit of the European Union and ASEAN. It's a pleasure to welcome you to the first ever EU ASEAN commemorative summit, and it's also the first ever EU ASEAN summit here in Brussels, here in the European Council, the home and meeting point for our 27 EU member states. I am very pleased to see so many familiar faces from the recent East Asia summit in Cambodia. I want to particularly recognize my co-chair, Prime Minister Hun Sen, chair of ASEAN and President Marcos as ASEAN coordinator for relations with the European Union. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here to celebrate 45 years as partners and to set our shared priorities for the coming years. This month also marks the two-year anniversary of ASEAN and the EU becoming strategic partners. And looking back, we have clearly shown that this was the right decision. The EU and ASEAN are the world's two most advanced regional integration organizations. We understand each other very well. We share the same values and the same spirit of cooperation. And we both know the challenges of transforming the vision of a political community and in common interest and rules into concrete reality for our citizens. Today's meeting is also an opportunity to bind our regions closer together. And one way to do that is through trade. Trade is a powerful tool for promoting growth and closer ties between our regions. Our trade agreements with Vietnam and Singapore have already boosted our carbon trade and we continue to help drive our recovery. And we are exploring trade agreements with other countries in your region. We also hope to develop an EU ASEAN free trade agreement. And another concrete example of our cooperation is our partnership and cooperation agreements with Thailand and Malaysia that we will sign later today. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, our two regions have faced major challenges in recent years. The current pandemic has hit our societies and economies hard and caused enormous suffering. But this pandemic has also brought out the best in humanity. We were able to develop and produce vaccines in record time. And the EU, together with our EU member states, we have mobilized over 800 million euros to support ASEAN and its member states to fight the pandemic. And through COVAX, we provided more than 3 billion euros to help secure almost 2 billion doses of vaccines for low and lower middle income countries in the ASEAN region included. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, we are living through turbulent geopolitical times. Climate change, COVID-19, conflicts and security challenges. And on top of this, Russia's war against Ukraine and its consequences for the world, the energy crisis and the food security crisis. The European Union has stood by the people of Ukraine since day one, because this war blatantly violates the United Nations Charter. The attempt to change internationally recognized borders by force is not acceptable, and we stand for the values and principles enshrined in the United Nations Charter. These are not just words, these are the compass for all countries who believe in peace, 
and the respect for human rights and for fundamental freedoms, and that includes respect for the territorial integrity of sovereign nations. Dear friends, the EU and ASEAN, we have so much in common, and that's why we are pleased to work together to deepen our cooperation. And we can do this in five key areas. First, to achieve greater prosperity. By working more closely together through multilateralism, we can build a more peaceful, fair, and prosperous world. It is in both our shared interest. Second, we can work more closely together to protect our planet. This is a global existential challenge that needs everyone on board, and we owe it to the future of our children. Third, the digital transition is a challenge for all our societies, and we can work together to develop peaceful, secure, open, and inclusive digital economies. The fourth area where we can deepen our cooperation is on infrastructure and connectivity by strengthening our links in the fields of science, technology, and innovation, including initiatives that bring our students and young people closer together. And finally, we can deepen our cooperation in security and defense across many areas like transnational crime, maritime security, women in conflict, and peacekeeping operations. In particular, we can work together to improve cybersecurity and fight cybercrime. I strongly believe we can deepen our relationship in all these fields for the benefit of our people. And this deeper cooperation goes hand in hand with the EU strategy for greater cooperation with the Indo-Pacific region. We want to contribute to the region's stability, security, prosperity, and sustainable development. Thank you for being here. You can count on the European Union. Thank you. The Philippines. Your Majesty, Your Royal Highnesses, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the Philippines as a country currently assume the ASEAN-EU coordinator role. Now I now have the pleasure to welcome His Excellency, President of the Republic of the Philippines, Mr. Ferdinand Marcos, Jr. Your Majesty, <coughs> Your Excellencies, President Michel, EU, <coughs> EU Commission President Ursula von der Leyen, distinguished guests, guests, ladies and gentlemen. After 45, e <coughs> after 45 years of enduring partnership, there is still much that can be achieved between the two organizations that we have. Given the breadth of potential cooperation between our regions and countries, I would like to enumerate three priorities. One, I look forward to closer maritime cooperation between our blocks based on the intersection of priority areas between the ASEAN outlook on the Indo-Pacific and the EU strategy for cooperation in the Indo-Pacific, underpinned by ASEAN centrality. Beyond declaring respect and support for UNCLOS as a legal framework that governs all activities in the oceans and seas, we need to see an effective application of the UNCLOS to address the maritime disputes and geopolitical rivalry in the Indo-Pacific to truly realize the still distant aspiration for the Indo-Pacific to become a sea of peace and prosperity for us all. Two, I look forward to, clo <clears throat> to closer economic cooperation, both on our bilateral and block-to-block -block relations. 
at this time of economic recovery from the ravages caused by the pandemic and the current threats on the supply chain, I hope to see the proposed Philippine-EU free trade agreement move beyond scoping negotiations soon. With the entry into force of the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership amongst Asia-Pacific countries, the European Union misses out on the benefit of having a similar agreement with ASEAN. We encourage the EU to calibrate the scope and coverage of its proposed FTA to what is currently possible for ASEAN to collectively agree on so we can make concrete progress on the negotiations on the ASEAN EU FTA. Likewise, I look forward to closer cooperation and to the continued implementation of the PHEU Partnership Cooperation Agreement for the benefit of our peoples. And third, the world must get together to fight the effects of climate change and to ensure sustainable development. Climate change threatens to radically transform, for the worse, many vulnerable ASEAN landscapes. It is a race against time to conserve and prevent habitat and diverse biodiversity loss. The ASEAN Center for Biodiversity, which is based in the Philippines and manages the preservation of all 51 ASEAN heritage parks dotted all over the region, which represents ASEAN's diverse ecosystems, needs as much support as it can get. I encourage the EU and its member states to continue extending cooperation activities and support for the ACB. We are currently losing huge chunks of our natural resources at a rate difficult to repair and impossible to replenish in our lifetime. The ACB's work is vital in preserving and growing ASEAN's rich national heritage, which serves as a main pillar of our culture and our economy. As, as coordinator of the ASEAN EU Dialogue and Green Tech and Innovation Mapping until 2024, the Philippines will vigorously pursue collaboration and coordination with the EU to meet the dialogue's aim of facilitating green technology transfer and cooperation between our regions. At the, bilat at the bilateral level, I express my appreciation for the launch earlier this year of the EU-funded National Copernicus Capacity Support Action Program for the Philippines, which will help us develop and apply space technologies to increase our resilience to natural disasters and climate change. There is no problem like climate change that is so global in nature that it requires immediate and united effort. We need to act now. We need to act together. We need to get it right. Thank you and good afternoon.